Hey guys, I'm Getsu134 here, bringing you another Kamen Rider Zeo review. This time of Kamen Rider uh, Zeo episodes 5 and 6, the Forze slash Fies arc. So yeah, I know, episode 7 premiered. I'm really sorry about that. As I'm going to try and be better. As you know, I'm doing this bi-weekly, so I'm going to watch two episodes and do them as an arc altogether, since each episode of this series is going to be a two-parter, revolving around a two-part story arc involving... Uh, the different rider that uh, Sogo will get as his power. In this case, it's a double of both common riders Forze and Fies. And, okay, I don't think the episodes are bad, but we do have to talk about something, and that is, of course, the fact that common uh, rider Fies is in this, and the fact that this is produced by Shirakura. Uh, for those of you who aren't really in the knowledge of Kamen Rider, Shirakura is a producer who believes that the best type of Kamen Rider series is stuff like Fies and Amazons. His whole worldview is that Kamen Rider shouldn't be toyetic and selling toys and such, and should be more about drama and dark stuff. And while I do agree that Kamen Rider can, ha can be dark, it has to be dark in the fact that it, that suits the series. And something that he sometimes doesn't do. He's also the guy who's responsible for Sho for Shoji Yoramura and Toki Toshiki Inoue being constantly used for stuff. And in fact, he's the reason why uh, Kamen Rider Tizen is so freaking bad. And here it really shows because this has Fives in it, and Fives is arguably his favorite Kamen Rider series. Unfortunately, he likes to, sh to shift his worldview of that, even though certain things didn't happen the way he thinks they do in Fies. In this case, the fact that Takumi Inui and Masato Kusako are... or Takumi Inu and Masato Kusaka are both in this. And for those of you who don't know, Masato Kusaka is considered the most evil Kamen Rider ever as Kamen Rider Kaixa, who constantly uses his powers to screw over Inu simply, or Takumi simply because he wanted to date Misora, the love interest of the series, and would do so to get people killed. But here, once again, much like in friggin' Kamen Rider Tizen, Takumi and Kusaka are supposedly friends. Which is not how it worked, but they were doing so because this is the Forze arc, and so they had to do the whole friendship stuff. This is, of course, tying into the fact that Sogo and Gates don't get along right now, but both want to try and. But Sogo wants him and T Sukoyomi to be his friends. It just doesn't seem to be working out that way for the two of them. So, yeah. The episode starts out being... Um, the the series, episode starts with Sogo seeing his friends from school and how they want their friends and they help each other and how Sogo really wants that for Sukoyomi and Ga uh, Gates. Although, to be fair, I think Sukoyomi really is trying to be his friend. It's just she wants to also prevent him from becoming Oma Zio. Um... And as he does so, he goes home and he finds out that Gates and Sukoyomi have already uh, been on the case of another rider. Um, in this case, a rider that has mysteriously been kidnapping 18-year-old girls who are all uh, uh, born under the Libra constellation. Which, of course, leads them to Am Amanogawa High School and to Kamen Rider Forze. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to see Forze or uh, Ryuse, uh, Gentaro or Ryuse in this as they were both making the the Bleach movie at the time this was coming out, uh, which they actually reference in the uh, in the uh, the two, the uh, point fives at the end. Uh, I think it's particularly episode six point five where they talk about um, they talk about how uh, both their actors couldn't come and they got stuck with with Takumi and Kusak and Masato and or Kusaka instead, and that made me giggle a lot. Um, they also reference that. The fact that they're there is Shirakura's fault. And I, I love that. That made me so happy. Like, even Toei knows that Shirakura kind of sucks. I don't know why they keep using him for stuff, but that was at least mildly funny. That I like seeing Kusaka. And, as much as I, I, I don't like Kusaka as a character, I do like seeing when his actor shows up. Because this actor does the, does the role really well. Uh, same with Takumi. Um, but Takumi doesn't show up until the very end of, the, of episode 6. But episode 5 is basically the three dress up in... Um, Amanagawa high uh, school clothes and try to figure out 
and try to find a Libra who will be the next victim. And, of course, they find uh, a girl by the name of Cardine, who they believe is the next victim. Um, and, in fact, she does get attacked by another Forze, which... I will admit the Forze stuff is really well done. As someone who... Um, Forze has a special place in my heart, because Forze was the first Kamen Rider series I was watching as it came out. Um, I was watching it, you know, e each episode as it came out. Uh, back in 2011, back when I was a junior in college, and that was my first, uh, my first Kamen Rider series after Dragon Knight. I did watch Mask Rider as a kid, but I didn't know what it was. And to be honest, I, I consider Dragon Knight more, more important to my liking of Kamen Rider, just because that was what got me into Kamen Rider, what got me back into Tokusatsu after I fell out with Power Rangers back in, back when I was like 12. And it really revived my love of, of Japanese superheroes and what got me into it. I did watch, um, try watching Kuga and other series, but I had a hard time watching it, especially because YouTube at the time really started purging Kamen Rider from it because of Toei's copyright stringence with copyright law. Um, but then I found, uh, a page known as Ancient Fever, and they were subbing Forze as, or were releasing Forze onto their website as it was coming out. Um, and I really got into Forze. I really, I really liked it. I, it probably helped that it was a lot like Power Rangers in that regard. Um, but yeah, and so th this arc was actually at least kind of interesting. And I will admit, like, I like seeing, I like seeing uh, the teacher, uh, Gentoro's homeroom teacher, and how he's one of the. Uh, one of the te uh, teaching teacher advisors for the Forza for the Common Rider Club. It was cool seeing the Common Rider Club again, even though they they don't they're not on the Rabbit Hutch. Um, it was cool because you got to see Hayabusa Kun, Yuki's puppet, and like they had pictures of the rider here, the of uh, the Rider Club members. Um, but yeah, so basically they find the girl, which actually uh, I have to admit it was it was done by Sogo's cle uh, cleverness, actually. He fakes getting hurt uh, falling down the stairs so that they have to go to the school nurse, and then they can use the school nurse's computer to um, to figure out uh, what girl, what 18-year-old girls are going to be um, are, are going to be li are Libras, and they find her, and they find Karin, who gets attacked by Masato Kusaka and pushed off a building, which is oddly kind of kind of weird just because it, it like it's kind of a reference to um Fies, I guess because Kusaka liked to push people off of stuff a lot <laughs> usually into rivers though this time she just gets pushed off a building um and so she gets saved by another Forze which is about the time when uh Sogo and his Sogo and Gates show up and they start fighting um, another Forze. Unfortunately, he and Karin get, uh, disappear and get away. Uh, and before they can go after him, a couple of students that are members of the Common Rider Club uh, stop them because they see that they're actual Common Riders, and there they meet um, uh, Gentoro's old, old teacher, whose name escapes me at the moment. I usually just called him Mr. Suspenders because of his suspender gag. Basically, they realize that he is a common rider, and Sogo sees Ryusei, who he realizes is a hint because of Waz, um, which is interesting because Waz here actually can't really translate the Twilight calendar calendar this time around, and says that all he can give uh, Sogo is that a is a clue to what's going on, and that is it it begins with a shooting star, which is a reference to Ryusei common rider's ne uh, meteor's name. Uh, because his name also translates to Shooting Star, hence why he was Common Rider Meteor, because a meteor is a shooting star. And in doing so, they come, ac uh, they come across the Common Rider Club, and they come across a suspender teacher who opens a, bo a, um, a box, which actually has the teacher, the picture of the teacher who he had a crush on, uh, and she was, in fact, the Scorpio Zodiarts, which is actually a nice little reference to Forze, because he had a crush on her. Um, even though she was the Scorpio Zodiarts. And so, um, where's that going? Okay. And so basically, um, he gives, uh, Sogo the, the Forze ride watch, 
as um, apparently Gintaro had knew knew ahead of time that someone was going to come for the the Forza Ride Watch, um, most likely because Sogo had given him the Ride Watch, and in doing so, it allows um, them to also figure out um, a ton, um, when to stop, uh, when to go back in time to stop another Forza, which is of course 2011. Although I will give it credit, Sogo has caught on that the fact that um, Another riders have their names and uh, the date of when that rider premiered written on them. So they already know it's 2011. They just have to figure out what rider it is because you need the power of that rider to defeat and another rider. Which, of course, he gets the another four. He gets the Forza Ride Watch and Gates and uh, Sogo travel back to 2011. And I actually like this this time because, like, Gates, like, you're going to come whether or not I tell you to stay or not. And he's like, yep. And then he's like, fine, do what you want. Which I kind of like to think that Gates is kind of warming up to Sogo and realizing that, you know, they really don't need to kill him, that they can save the world without having to kill him. Um, which I think also is kind of tying into this episode's um, this um, two-part story arc. Which I will admit, the stuff with Sogo and Gates is actually pretty good. I, I, I like the fact that Sogo wants to be his friend, but he's not pushing it. He simply wants to help Gates stop this monster from hurting people. Which, again, I, I actually kind of like Sogo's character that he wants to be a king and he realizes that he and he but he's still he wants to be a good king. Like this is much he's much better than he was in the first episode where he kind of didn't care whether or not he was going to be a good king or a bad king. I think mainly because he remembered that he wanted to be a king because kings help people or at least good kings should help should help people. So I, I do like the idea that perhaps it's it's not that he wants to be a king in the sense that like he really does want to rule people. He wants to be a king that because kings are people that can help. Kind of like how like <clears throat> Luffy in One Piece wants to be the pirate king, and that's not really he's not really the actual king of pirates. He wants to be the the pirate among pirates. Um But you know, that's just me rambling. So they go back in time and they find another Forza trying to ki um, kill another student. Um, and at, at this point we find out that he had had mysterious powers before one of the time jackers uh, had came to him. Um, in fact, this arc actually introduces a new um, a new uh, a new time jacker. And in fact, I think it's the third and final time jacker Sh uh, Schwartz. <clears throat> um, as apparently... Um, this kid had had power, um, that he was using on Karin before, um, but it was beginning to fail, and he came across Forze, and doing so, Schwartz came across him, he's like, I'd like to try an experiment on you, and he gives him the another Forze watch. Bring him into another Forze. <clears throat> this was actually confusing for a little bit, until I remember that, uh, Faisal, and I thought that this kid was an Orphanoc. But it's a little bit more complex than that, and we'll get to that when we get to the next episode. But basically, the two of them fight the another rider, and Sogo defeats him using the power of the um, the Forze armor, which I actually kind of like. I like the fact that like it has like the rocket like parts on his arms that he can actually use his missiles. Um, another Forze can actually use all the ride switches, and in fact, he was using um, the melted switch that is um, that they, I think either was. Kengo's Astro Switch that was uh, um that what he was born from, or the Astro Switch that they use as um the connection between their locker and the rabbit hutch. I couldn't remember which switch it was, but I think it's one of those two. And he absorbs people into them so that he can um use them for his nefarious purposes, which we find out in the next episode. But basically it gives him it doesn't give him the powers of the Astro Switches, like um uh, the um, an um, another Forze can do like another Forze can use like all of the Astro switches. Like he uses Chain Array, um, rockets. Although he uses rocket like an energy projectile, like another build uses the basketballs. And I believe, oh yeah, and he also used the uh, launcher for to shoot missiles so that he could make his escape. Um, <clears throat> but so, um, where is it going with us? Oh, and so, um, but um. But with the, the the another ride watch, it basically just gives him rocket powers, or the Forza ride watch gives uh, Zio rocket powers, 
uh, which he mostly uses to shoot his arms like rockets to either deflect the missiles or like to use as a projectile. Um, what he mo what it mainly is for is to do a um, an altered version of the ro um, the rider rocket drill kick that Forze uses as his main uh, main main finisher when he's in his base mode, um, which is actually kind of cool. Um, it's, it actually turns Zio into a rocket, like the shoulders on his. Um, the shoulders on Zio's armor turn into a rocket, or a nose uh, becomes the fuselage of a, sh of a shuttle cone around his uh, around Zio's head, and it turns him into like a little rocket, and he punches into Z into another Forze, taking him into space. Um, he butchers the it's space timeline that Forze normally has. Instead, he says it's time for time. This time we're going into space or something like that. Uh, but then after he does so, it splits apart so that he can become. So he's back into his rider form again, but then reverses him so his feet are going forward, and he sh shoots the rockets behind him so that he can do a uh, spinning drill kick it, while in shuttle mode instead of having, like, a drill on his leg and a rocket on his arm. Uh, I thought that was... I, I think that that uh, finisher's kind of cool. Um, and, of course, it defeats another Forza, Forza, but instead of destroying him like it normally does... The armor shatters off and reveals that he was another. He was another. He was actually another Fize underneath said armor. That in order to defeat him, they'll have to go back even further in time to figure um to when he got the Fize watch the fi another Fize watch to truly completely fix the timeline. <clears throat> um, which we get to in episode six. Um, in this we find out that um. The girl actually had had died. Um, in fact, she died in two thousand three, as both her and her friend, uh, I think her name his name is Ryuma, uh, both went to Ryusei High School, which is the high school that was um, breeding Orphanox for Smart Brain in Common Rider Fies. She had in fact died during a car accident um, because he had some other th things he had to do, so he couldn't be with her. And she accidentally got hit by a car. And so in his guilt, his grief, Wool shows up and decides to give him the power of the, um, another Fize watch, turning him into another Fize. Um, and in fact, Kusaka, who had attacked the girl at the end of the episode, uh, was actually trying to kill her because she wants to die. Um... And to, and Takumi actually stops him from doing so because reasons, I guess because like he's his friend, he knows that Kus Kusaka could get killed or, or something. See, this is the part that it is makes no sense because the fact that two of them hate each other, so like it's really com confusing for me to explain what's going on, especially because Takumi only shows up in the in the at the end of the first episode and really only is basically here to watch over. Kusaka and prevent him from doing something reckless. And more or less just works with Sogo for most of the episode and really doesn't get to do much. And in fact, none of just Kusaka. They're really just here to replace <clears throat> Gentaro and Ryusei and to the point where like they're wearing clothes that are similar to Gentaro and uh, Ryusei. I mean, granted, uh, Takumi's outfit is pretty much for uh, Gentaro's outfit because they're both kind of delinquents, or at least were delinquents. Uh, Kusaka, in fact, wearing a brown coat similar to Ryusei's, uh, transfer school outfit, or transfer student outfit, as Ryusei was a transfer student, so he wore his school's outfit. <clears throat> but basically, Gates and Tsukuyomi spend the whole time trying to research when exactly the, the girls disappeared and find out that Karin is, has not aged in 15 years, that she was a senior back in 2003, but she looks like she hasn't aged a day. Um, which I think is kind of supposed to be a reference to Orphanox, but it doesn't really make sense, because Orphanox could age. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and Sogo figures out the same thing, and it's here they find out that Ryuma is actually using the power to, to I guess, absorb these girls into something and then transfer their life force into Karin. It's really not clear what exactly he's doing. But basically, he's trying to save her, keep her alive because he feels guilty that she died. <clears throat> and of course, 
Um, after talking to Sogo's uncle, they realize what he's doing and that it's unnatural to keep her alive. She wants to die because she doesn't want to live at the cost of other people's lives. And basically, Takumi and Kusaka kind of want to prevent this constant cycle of sacrifice and death or something. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't fit at all with Kusaka, and it's not really explained very well. They just kind of have it that Kusaka wants to try and prevent this stuff. It's probably... Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to drop my phone. It's probably the most heroic thing Kusaka has ever done. <laughs> and doesn't mesh with him at all, and was really frustrating with me, so I probably missed a lot of what was explained just because I didn't really care for the explanation anyways. So, basically, they try once again... Um, he try, um Another Forze tries to once again absorb another Libra, because they find out that um, someone is just turning 18 at the school. Uh, thanks to Spender's teacher, they find out that there is another girl. She was 17, but the next day was her birthday, so she is an 18-year-old Libra. Um, <clears throat> so he goes to try and attack this girl, and Ku I think Kusaka manages to rescue her, which gets him beat up by um, Forze the same way he got beat up when he was fighting the horse or the uh, the knight Orphanok. Uh, uh, the horse knight orphanoc uh, Yuki and he gets grabbed by the throat much like he does when right before he got killed in Kamen Rider f yeah, fine. they really do love referencing that a lot like almost every single time he comes back they redo that scene where he gets his neck snapped although he doesn't get his neck snapped here but like I was like is he just gonna die again <laughs> I mean, both him and Takumi have died like three or four times now, and it's never stuck. Um, and in fact, they never explain how Takumi's alive here. I guess he's no longer an orphanoc. But in that, but by that ref point, he should still be dead because orphanocs become orphanocs by dying and getting reborn as the next stage of human evolution. So, like, that should still happen. He should still die. Even though, like... I don't know. It's time travel stuff. Timey wimey, wibbly wobbly. But no, I did. I did laugh just because I, I, I love the fact that they constantly bring back Kusaka and Takumi. But like every single time, they either either die again or almost die in the same way they died the last time. I don't know. It's just kind of weird that they keep constantly doing that. But um, eventually, Gates and Sogo come at, come and rescue the two, and they drive Forze off. Uh, Sogo going after him to prevent him from uh, killing this girl from Amanogawa High School. Um, uh, but just in case they... Um, they uh Sogo goes keeps keeps him from from uh killing another girl um in the present while he gives Gates the Fi's watch that Takumi had. Basically Takumi like just then remembered that he had the watch. I think due to the fact that um Sogo and Gates re, re uh jogged his memory about being a common rider or something. It's not really made clear. Takumi and him don't really seem to remember their common riders, but they do know that they're about Orphanox. It's you know, weird. Um, so Gates taking the the Forza, or the Fies ride watch goes back in time to when Wool had turned um, turned him into another Fies, which she actually is shocked at the fact that he's two riders, um, though she realized that it must have meant that Schwartz had done something in the future. And so uh, he... While he couldn't prevent the first girl, he does defeat um, another another Fies, which I assume sets her free anyways, because it seems that like the victims of the Riders do get their time fixed. Um, and so the two of them, basically in the future and in the past, Gates and uh, Zio manage to defeat uh, the another Rider for the final time. And it's actually really cool. I actually really like um, Gates's Fies armor. Um, I like the fact that he uses um, the uh, the smart the Fi smartphone X to generate weapons that were based on um, Fies. Like he gets the Fies uh, camera camera 
uh, Knuckle Duster. Um, he uses it to create the Fies Pointer that is needed for the Rider Kick. It was just kind of cool seeing that. Like he he uses the smartphone as a as both a weapon and as a way to control the armor, uh, explaining why the uh, how the Fies smartphone works. Um, and so they defeat. Defeat him, and Karin finally dies uh, for good. Um, and she, she, uh, and it seems like Ryuma kind of realizes what he's done that he was he was warped by the power that was given to him by the Time Jackers. Um, and so, uh, and so, um, uh, he apologized to her and she basically says, I, I just want you to, I want you to start living for me for, for yourself instead of for me. And with that, she fades away. Um, and so the episodes end with the fact that the two now have new ride watches and the fact that Gates and Sukuyomi are slowly becoming more of Sogo's friends. And that, um, he realizes that in order to truly prevent the bad future, they have to stop the endless cycle of revenge and sacrifice. Um, and that's where the episode ends, and that, more or less, that the, um, the next, uh, they show a hint to the next episode, which is, of course, the Wizard Arc, which just premiered, and I, yeah. <laughs> so, in summary, I don't think these episodes were bad, but the Kamen Rider Forze stuff is really frustrating if you're a fan of Forze, or of Fies, because it really, really doesn't doesn't mesh at all with the original Kamen Rider 5 series. It more meshes with the altered uh, stuff that we saw in the Tyson movies with Fies. Um, and even then, he's still alive, which I think Kamen Rider Yongo was... Uh, the Kamen Rider Yongo net movie was where he finally died for good and that, that we got a new Fies, but it's whatever. It's an anniversary. It's for the anniversary series, so they I get why they brought the actors back that they did. It's just frustrating in that it kind of means that the Tyson movies were overseeded. But then again, I don't think those movies were very good, so it's whatever. Um, and it also doesn't help that we get much more stuff for the Fies episodes than we do the Forze. Like, what we do get is very minor, and it's mostly in the first episode, and gets completely overshadowed in the Fies episode. Um, it's really, again, it's really just frustrating in the fact that because they couldn't get uh, Gentaro and Ryusei as actors, it meant that they really only did a, like one episode with Forze, whereas every other writer before has gotten two episodes. Um, and even then, I think it was kind of unfair to the Fi stuff that they only really get to have one episode to themselves as well, just because I get why they did it because both have a high school th uh, high school theme in them or have a lot of stuff to do with high school. The fact that Forze and Fi's kind of sound similar. And the fact that like, to like, there there is like a a a like a rider and a sidekick rider in Fies, even though technically there's three riders in Fies. I don't know why they couldn't have had. Well, of course, again, Delta never never had an actual rider, so I get why Delta never showed up in this. Um. So, yeah, like I said, it was just frustrating just because of the fact that it tries to play that Kusaka is a good guy when he's not. And that him and Takumi are actually friends, and they're not. Um, but yeah, I, I I argue probably six has so far been the weakest episode of the whole series. Um, I liked I liked five, fine enough, but six really frustrated me just with the fact that they try to treat Kusaka and Takumi's friendship as or Takumi's relationship as actually being friends when they're not. Um. Oh, and I did like the fact that Waz prevented uh, another for, um, another Forze from try from um, almost canceling out Zio's transformation before he could transform into for uh, the for uh, Kamen Rider for uh, Kamen Rider Zio Forze armor. That was actually really funny because Waz's like, no, nah, no, nah, you're not preventing my lord's new power trans power ceremony, and he stops it with a with his hand. That was actually kind of cool. Well, uh, like I said, Waz is probably my favorite character in this so far. Like, I like that he's very mysterious and like he's just he's just fun. I I rather enjoy uh, seeing him. Uh, but anyway, guys, um, I think that's in general all I have to say about about the, these episodes. 
Um, I might do something for Halloween. I might, um, I might do a Garo episode for Halloween. Um, it's going to take place in this, in the seasons I never got to, but we'll see. Um, I'm also considering maybe restarting my, comp, uh, my Garo stuff again, because I found a good place to watch it, but we will see. Um, because I will have to start off where we left off. Um, uh, but I think I might do something garo -y, Garo for Halloween. Um, either a mini-series or an episode that I think is very Halloween-themed. Uh, we shall see. Um, but anyway, guys, otherwise, I'm just going to keep doing Kamen Rider stuff. Um, I will do an um, a, a vlog about uh, the My Hero Academia game when I get it. Um, it might be a couple of, a couple of days before I get to it, but we shall see. Um, but otherwise, guys, I think that's going to be it for this week. I will try to get uh, Zeo um, the next episode, um, the next story arc uh, review for Zeo up after eight comes out. I do apologize that I'm making guys wait so long. I just think it's easier to talk about the arc in general when it comes out. Um, so anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm Zongetsu134, and I will catch you next time. Take care.